Do you get tired of the mundane only to have some random thing come in and just mess your whole freaking life up? Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to embrace randomness. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? Yeah. Did you notice I almost messed up saying mundane? How random was that? <laughs> yeah. Pretty random. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So uh, I don't have much uh, to say to begin this episode. But I guess, so I guess we'll just get into a few things. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say, you know, it is funny that we do all like, we all appreciate like when random things happen, sometimes when they're positive, but we also all really want consistency and regularity. So it is like, there is a kind of contrast there, you know? Well, it's, I only want the good randomness. Like I want to win the car, <laughs> win the lottery, win these things, have great I don't want the tree falling around. on the house. Yeah. But <laughs> then the difficulties in life, it's like, I can't freaking bear it. And uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's already it's... hard enough. And then when those things happen, it's like, ugh, you know, you can't. Yeah, it. it was as I was reading about patience today, and it's like you know the, they say there's couldn't three even get types through of it. patience. One like <laughs> interpersonal patience, two dealing with things in life, and three like in the attainment of your goals. And it's like those dealing in things with life when you have these random things handed to you that just suck. They do. It's hard. So, anyways, right. we're each going to give a few tips for how to embrace randomness, which would be the opposite of running away from it. So. <laughs> right uh because if you because if you ever have a cat that won't leave you alone just like hug it and don't let go and then it'll take off yeah and it's like <laughs> it's like oh god you wanted so, to see me yeah <sighs> so that being said my first one how to embrace randomness is lean into it so yeah. oftentimes we have these things happen and we may not like them and we like dip our toe in it you know instead of just dipping your toe in it because there's nothing you can do about it anyways just lean into it. Just go full force, hug the cat, and then eventually it'll run away or maybe you'll both have some type of thing that you might enjoy. I, actually, I like that one too, though, because there is truth to leaning in, you know, because whenever, you, if you're not leaning in, you're avoiding, right? Or you're ignoring or you're trying to run away from. And so you're never really dealing with it either. And I think like if you lean into it, like, yeah, some of the random things that happen are bad, but you also show yourself that you can get through it. You can handle it. And then it's not so bad the next time, you know? I like that one. That's a good one. That actually yeah. goes really well with my first one, which is don't try to control what you can't. Think of like the dichotomy of control or like the Taoist said, right? Like you want to go with the flow of the universe, not against it. Like there's so much in this world that happens that we just have no control over. And I think a lot of times our struggle to deal with randomness is when we want to control that, you know, some natural event happens and we say, why, you know, why that happen? And it's like, well, there's no reason it just happened. So you just, don't worry about that. Focus on what you can worry about, what you can control. Yeah, that's a great one. Focusing on things that are in your control, like your own opinions, your thoughts, your feelings <laughs> about things, that type of stuff. Because I can't even tell you how often I just get into a terrible mood because things didn't go exactly how I wanted them <laughs> <Yeah>. to go. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Did you ever catch like yourself too? You know, like something bad will happen and like, oh, just make me so upset. And then like, and then I catch myself like, being short with people and stuff and i'm like oh, i'm such an asshole like this has nothing to do with them you know like, <laughs> it's, dude i i have such bad manners when it comes to that because i just become a total jerk and it's like why because life didn't cater to my every need all the I think exactly time. what i wanted <laughs> yeah what a child <laughs> yeah so uh That's my next one for this want. how to embrace randomness is remember this too shall pass Oh. So this is something that like, especially when life smacks you upside the head with something you didn't like, eventually it'll pass. It's But it's like the, the recency bias, how right now it seems like it'll last forever. It's terrible. This is the worst thing ever. But it's not. It's going to pass. I mean, guaranteed 100 years, you're going to be dead. It's going to be gone. You yeah, know? At the very least, most you likely, won't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, most likely going to pass a lot more quickly than that. Like chances are within about a week, three weeks, maybe a month, you'll forget about it. So, yeah. You know, that's actually a good one, too, because I, I noticed the more I acknowledge, like, my feelings, especially, like, difficult things, you know, like, you also are aware how fast they do go away. And, like, but when you're having that experience or when the thing happens, it feels like it's going to last forever and it's hard and you get frustrated. But, like, you're right. If you just remind yourself that, like, yeah, it might suck for a little bit, but it will pass and things will be fine again later and you'll be all right. And it's a good way to keep yourself calm, you know, in perspective. Yeah, there was this, there was a story in uh, How to Stop Wearing and Start Living about a guy who seemed like nothing nothing ruffled his feathers. 
And somebody asked him why. And he's like, well, whenever I have something that I'm worrying about, I take out a sheet of paper and I write it down. And then I put it in my drawer and I close the drawer. And I look back two weeks later and see if it's still bothering me. And if it's still bothering me, then I put it back in the drawer for another two weeks. <laughs> and then <laughs> I look again. <laughs> and eventually, he's like, eventually, everything just works itself out. Like, it's not like I need to do anything. So why bother worrying? That is a great way to handle things you have no control over, too. Just write them down, like, check up on them. Hey, mm-hmm. it's gone, you know, or whatever. That's really that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> try that. Uh, my second one for how to embrace randomness is actually meditate. Like I noticed personally, like, you know, a big part of meditation is just allowing yourself to sort of see what thoughts rise up, right? And deal with those sort of like psychic knots and problems that within your own mind. And I think doing that, you know, calming your mind and having it ha- or giving yourself time throughout the day to calm your mind makes you way more able to deal with the random things in life because you're not so stressed and like all over the place in your head all the time you have this sort of mental prowess to deal with these things as they come up and not lose your shit you know yeah and also you learn how to just like bear witness to it and sit with it because yeah guaranteed these random things come up and you want to deal with them immediately but you can't and so like you know it meditation you have all these things come up that you can't deal with while you're sitting and meditating. So you just kind of have to sit with them. Yeah. Let it go. Bingo. So my last one is uh, is a good one because when you're in the thick of things, it's like the only time when you don't have access to what you need in order to get through it. <laughs> As we know, <laughs> you know from experience. It's like, yeah. It's like, you know exactly what to do all the time, except for when you actually need to know it. So, yeah. uh, My last one would be think of what advice you would give your friend. And I can't even tell you how often this helps me out because I'll be stuck in a problem. I'll be like, there's no freaking way out. This is terrible. And I'd be like, wait, hang on. If this happened to Danny, what would I say to him? Oh, yeah. duh. Okay. That makes sense. And then I'd be like, okay, I'll do that. And it works. You know, it's funny. I do that all the time, too, because it does work really well. We're so hard on ourselves. And we're so irrational and unrealistic with ourselves, you know, and how we like talk to ourselves and handle ourselves. And it's funny, Aristotle mentioned that in the common Kean ethics that like, you know, your friend is another self and it's easier to evaluate and kind of get perspective on an, an outside, like from an outside perspective, you know, on somebody else's actions. So like just flipping that perspective helps so much in thinking about your own life and how you're responding to things. That's a really good one. I think people should keep that in mind. My last one is allow room for randomness in your plans. I think I know from experience, all the people I know that freak out the most when things go awry is the ones who plan for everything and try to make sure that everything goes according to plan specifically. So, you know, because it's it's bound to fail. You like can't Bridezilla. control it. Yeah, yeah. You can't control everything, dude. Stuff's going to happen no matter what you do. You're dealing with like unknown variables. So just when you're planning, try not to account for everything. Leave some room for randomness, whether it's like a day on your vacation that you have nothing scheduled so you can just kind of do whatever and see what happens. Or like, you know, something like that. Just give yourself a little bit of space for it and then it's not so bad when it happens. Yeah, that's that's a great one. That reminds me of the book, the how to, there's something about stopping. How to how something to... about something? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a DVD or a tape. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, yeah. Because we we get into we get into these problems because we're in such a hurry, and, and if we weren't in such a hurry, it wouldn't be a big deal, and then we would just be able to be okay with it. So that's a great one, scheduling time for this stuff to come up. Well, it's funny too because we always act like too it's like a big disaster when things don't go exactly as we wanted them to go, and it's like, is mm-hmm. it though? You know, mm-hmm. probably not. Yeah, I wonder what it was like before things had to before like before clocks. Like 1300, right. 1300 uh, after Christ was when clocks came out. You know, yeah. before then, the sun comes up and the sun goes down. That's your day. And the day gets longer and shorter as the year progresses, which is interesting too, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. you also sleep longer when, I mean, because the days are longer, you sleep longer. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. there you have it. How to embrace randomness. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to give it a like, thumbs up, reviews. Those are very helpful. Also, down in the description, we have a questionnaire. If you have a few minutes, fill that out for us. And uh, otherwise, we'll catch you later in the week. This is the Existential Soy Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy.